If you're like me, you're really getting into the whole UVM thing. One of its best features is the ability to customize how everything works. I use my log files to debug my environment even more than I use my waveform viewer. I wasn't particularly pleased with what my log files looked like with UVM though. Your message breaks down into a prefix and the actual message. Inside the prefix, you typically find the messages level, the file name and line number, simulation time, component hierarchy, and the ID. It's important to me that I clearly see all of the information I need. When you see a bunch of UVM log messages printed out though, it's a bit of a mess. Here's a line showing where each line's message actually starts. Engineers are all about straight edges and Manhattan routing. That looks more like the Maryland coastline to me. What would happen if we lined things up a bit? Isn't that much easier to read? Unfortunately though, screen real estate is as expensive as a waterfront condo. We can no longer even read the message it has been pushed so far out to sea. There's plenty of trimming we could do though. A lot of the above is repetitive and offers no new information. Let's get rid of it. I replaced the UVM info text with a shorter yet still searchable replacement. I got rid of the full paths of the file names because I expect those won't be duplicated in my environment. But I gave the time field some room to grow. Some of my messages were still off to the right getting crab cakes, so I trimmed the hierarchy from the left, noting that everything derives from UVM test top and the most interesting stuff is on the end. I also shortened the ID field because sometimes it's a string of capital letters and other times it just repeats the hierarchy. Hmm. We'll get to that in a minute or two. This is all swell, but here at Cabium, we happen to like our timestamps to be further to the right, and we like our file names printed differently. And it would be nice if errors and warnings stood out a bit more, but you probably have your own preferences. Another thing that bothers me about UVM's messaging is that for every single debug message you add, you have to think of some clever little ID that you'll never remember later. Some of my favorites from UVM, Sturmtick, Signetitum, Hstop, Config Apple, Fictitip, and Beetleburp. Okay, so I made the last one up. The point is that these are rather silly. UVM uses these IDs to allow you to promote or demote any message from an error to something that is not an error. That's pretty much the only use you'll ever have for them, so why not just use them for errors, warnings, and fatals? Then you don't have to use randomly selected Scrabble tiles just to print a debug statement. At Cavium, we don't really use this feature at all, and we found ourselves always filling it with a call to get full name instead. So we got rid of it by replacing the macros with our own. Yes, I know, I am a heretic. Since we no longer print out the IDs, our messages now have plenty of room, and we can type long, meaningful soliloquies. Here's another tip. Almost all of our debug messages need to print out variables of some sort. For this, you often need to call the sformat f function. That's too much typing. We can absorb it into our macro. Macros in System Verilog aren't particularly advanced though, so you need to put parentheses around everything, even when you don't have variables. Still, Mom always said, saving keystrokes saves bugs. Now it's time to see the code that actually does all of this. We start by creating a new report server class derived from UVMs. Then we override the compose message function, which needs to return the string that we want. Now I format the file name and line number the way I like it. Then we take the ID or hierarchy field and format that. And we add the time string. And here's how we show off our errors, warnings, and fatals. And then we return the prefix that we've made, concatenated with the actual message that was passed to this function, and we're done. You might look at all that code and say that it's rather expensive to do so much string processing. That's what I thought, too. Our log files sometimes have millions of lines. Well, you can be clever and cache the results of the formatting we did. And I can also provide my users with some configurability. You might also rightly say that we could eliminate all of this nonsense and post-process our log files to be nice and pretty. This is definitely an alternative. However, our live simulations would be difficult to decipher. Now I'll replace UVM's report server with my own in the top level test bench. I do this in an initial block so it happens as early in the sim as possible and I give our users some plus arcs for the configurability. Oh, and let's make sure the time prints out the way I like it. Good to go. Now let's change the UVM macros to suit our needs. Remember to put the whole thing in a begin end statement. Here's where we replace the ID with the component hierarchy. And here's where we absorb the S format F into our macro. That's why the parentheses are necessary. Then you'll want to do that for the other macros, error, warning, and fatal. 
You may soon discover that static classes and interfaces cannot handle calls to get full name, so these would need their own separate macros. Now I have a nice pretty log file. I can filter my log file to show the complete history of my beach vacation sequence, or show me just what a particular monitor is doing. A bunch of nondescript transfers were collected? That's not very helpful. Here's the unfiltered log file. Instead of printing out the whole UBUS transfer as a table on a separate line with the sprint function, what if we just printed a clean summary on the same line? We could use the convert to string function to print out just the basics like this. Now when we filter our log file, we have a clearer understanding of everything the bus monitor sees. Thank you for listening. And remember, Cavium is looking for super smart people. So, if you've got a big giant brain and you love a good challenge, we are hiring for verification jobs in both San Jose and Boston. Feel free to send a resume to the email address below. Wait a minute. That's better.